the video just starts like without me doing anything. I think if you wave your hand, it just starts. Anyways, I haven't even figured out what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I look tired. I've not been sleeping very well. A lot of warfare. Actually, I slept better last night, but um, I seem to have a lot of energy during the day, so I'm constantly uh, moving. <laughs> it's been nice because um, I made a pact with God, and I was like, God, can you get my body in shape? Um, and I had quit walking for like a week or so because I wasn't, not quit walking, but I wasn't really doing my full workout. But I was like, help me get in shape, Lord. And he was like, I turned on my um, workout thing on my phone and it said three miles. And I have not walked three miles yet. I've been doing maybe two. And um, so I was like, okay, three miles. So I've been walking three miles every day um, ever since that. It's been like two weeks, two and a half weeks maybe. Um, but it's, it's working like wonders. Like I have so much more energy and I've lost some weight, which is nice because I ate an entire bag of nuts, I think, in two days. And I thought I was going to gain like 10 pounds. I made these uh, honey roasted um, hazelnuts. Oh my gosh, they were so good. Um, get you some. Anyways, um, the Lord's been speaking to me a lot about deliverance. And I've been looking at a lot of deliverance ministry and studying it. And it's like really, really important. Um, he had me in Matthew today, in Matthew chapter 10, um, where Jesus commanded the disciples to go out and preach the kingdom of God, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to cast out demons. And I've been listening to Isaiah Saldivar, um, a deliver deliverance minister on YouTube. He is absolutely amazing. I just listened this morning to um, one of the rallies that they had somewhere. And man, he is, he gets me pumped. I was like screaming and, and, and just hooting and hollering. And my dad had to come and tell me to be quiet. I'm living at my dad's house right now. But man, it was good. You get, you got to go watch it. You got to get you some. It is, it's, that's good. That's good stuff. It's good stuff. You can feel the Holy Ghost fire. It's all over it. It's just really good stuff. Um, so uh, I'm really pumped about learning about deliverance. I think it is the new revival that the church is going to. Not the ch not church like the building with four walls, but the church us. We are the church. We don't go to church. We are the church. And um, I really do believe that we should be living just as the disciples and Jesus were living, going out and casting out demons and um, raising the dead and healing the sick, laying hands on the sick and uh, ministering to people and really baptizing people in the Holy Spirit. Not this, um, Isaiah Saldivar says, Chuck E. Cheese Christians, but it's so true. It's just, it's just is so true. People go to church every week and they think they're saved and they're going to heaven, but it's just, that's not, that's not biblical. It, it, like he says, there nowhere in the New Testament does it say go to church. It says assemble together and worship, praise the Lord, sing, you know, come together in, in um, fellowship to come to and assemble together. Um, we are, Jesus said, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Um, so we don't have to go to a building, but we do need to join forces. We do need to all work together to um, save souls and deliver people from the bondage that they're in. Um, the It's the bondage. I got delivered this summer, and um, God sent me a prophetic dream, and it, and I, the 
enemy has been stealing my dreams, but at the end of the dream, I saw rescue, like, across, just like, it's rescue in big, bold letters. And then I went outside, and when I got my coffee, I just woke up, saw rescue, went outside, turned on my um, YouTube music, and three, three songs in, three Christian songs, I just hit play, like, random, and um, the third song was Rescue by Lauren Daigle. And I had never heard Lauren Daigle before. I didn't know this song. Um, I just woke up from that prophetic dream that said rescue. And I was just floored. I was like, oh my gosh. I thought God was talking about him coming and bringing me out of where I am and taking me to a different place. But he was talking about something spiritual because I was in spiritual bondage from my years past everything that was happening to me everything that um, I had come into agreement with that I didn't even know was um, oppressing me I had no idea that these things were even possible or what they were or anything I just came to accept Jesus as my Savior in January I've always been a believer in God and Jesus but when I went started my awakening um, I went through this new age stage where I renounced Jesus. I, 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 I declared that Jesus was just another man and, it, it, you know, all, a, a lot of like really horrible things. And I had to repent for that. And Jesus, and he forgave me. He forgave me. And um, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I said some horrible things and I've done some awful things but God forgave me and I'm so glad that he did and I'm so glad that he is as merciful as he is um, but I will never go back I will never go back I, I have seen so many miracles I have seen so much I've seen people get healed um, I prayed over a, a girl who got her finger shut in the back back um, hatch of a minivan like for for two minutes the mom couldn't find the keys and I was in the Walmart parking lot and I was just walking by and she's screaming like bloody murder right and she's screaming at the top of her lungs her, her whole finger was shut in this minivan in the back door it was shut slam shut and she's screaming mom can't find the keys and I'm and I just stop and she finds the keys she opens it and she pulls her finger out and her finger is like all snaggle tooth like backwards and smashed Okay, smashed. And I'm just like, you are healed in the name of Jesus. I didn't want to touch your finger because I, I knew it hurt. And I was just like, you are healed in the name of Jesus. And I just started praying over her. And then all of a sudden she just stops crying. And we look at her finger and it's like back to normal all of a sudden. And then she just gets in the car. And then I just went inside of Walmart. And the mom just looks at me like astounded. And I was even like... Did that just really happen? I didn't, couldn't believe that it, that just, like I saw that, did that just really happen? I mean, it was so weird. It was crazy. It was totally smashed and, and all bent and it looked broken. And all of a sudden it just like miraculously went back to normal. And then she stopped crying and got in the car and they were all good. I mean, I, it was a miracle. It was a miracle. And I've seen... I've just seen too many things to know that God is who he says he is. He is everything the Bible says he is. Every bit of everything the Bible says that God and Jesus are, that is exactly what it is. There's not any farce about it. I mean, it's all real. It's real. I know for a fact. I've seen it too, I mean, time and time again. So... I'm solidified um, in Jesus, and I know now that deliverance is the key. It's the future for the revival of, of his people, for the saving of souls. We've been in bondage. Jesus came and died on the cross for us so that we could be free. But because of the world and the things that are in the world, we have come into agreement with things, and we have opened doors with our sin to let these demons run run crazy and run havoc in our lives and we don't even know it because it's spiritual we can't see it and everything that you know the world says is you know that stuff's not real or, or especially if you're in the 
you know, going to church in the Christian community are like, oh, that's, you know, stay away from demonic stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. They don't want to talk about demons and da, da, da. But it, it is a huge part of what is wrong with everyone. Satan has infiltrated every single part of our lives with so much deception. Um, the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, the things that you would never even guess. I mean, I can't even start to even cover the topic right now because it is so extensive. Like, you could talk about it for days. Um, but I went through a cleansing process over the last, um, since January, and God had me throw away basically everything that I owned um, that had witchcraft attached to it, that had bad energy attached to it, things that were tying me to people I didn't need to be tied to. Um, he was cleansing my energy. He was cleansing uh, my soul, he was purging everything. Like I had stopped listening to secular music. I mean, I was a drug addict. I was full throttle drug at full throttle for 30 years. I was shooting up methamphetamines, smoking cigarettes for 30 years, drinking every single day. I mean, and I was loving it. I was having a good old time in my sin. And everything came to a screeching halt. I don't know if somebody did a graveyard um, spell on me or what happened, but I lost everything again for like the third or fourth time in the last five years. I was homeless for three years. The last since uh, October, I had been living in my car. My dog died like four days before I had to be evicted from my home. Everyone in the town came and stole all of my stuff. I couldn't even get it, and I had no one to turn to. No one, not a single person. And I turned to Jesus. I turned to God. I had nothing left. God let it. He let it happen because he knew. He knew the end from the beginning, and he knew that it would um, bring me into sub such submission and humility and it would make me want to seek him because I had nothing left I had nothing I was on the street by myself with no one with nothing no car I had no money I had nothing no family everyone had turned their back on me I was a lost cause nobody nobody would pick up the phone not a single person no one It was horrible. So when I decided to turn to God, very quickly I gave my life to Jesus through um, prophets. I YouTube, I have prophets on YouTube um, was my was my outlet. That was the only I don't I didn't have anyone, and I I got a car, and I started living in my car. And I started working for DoorDash, and I gave my life to Jesus. And then I would drive around and do DoorDash and sleep in my car at night at the Dart Rail Station in Dallas. And um, I would minister to other homeless people on the street, and I would help them. I would make money, and I would give them money, and I would give them food, and I would help them. And I'd, and I'd tell them, I, I, you know, I'd make deals with them. I'm like, ask God for one thing, one thing, and I promise you he's going to answer your prayer you know, just to give them some hope. And then I would beg and plead with them. I'm like, God, okay, I told them you're going to answer their prayer. So you got to do it. You got to do it. You know? And, um, I mean, I, I never saw it. Usually didn't see any of those people after their, the initial whatever, but, um, Dallas is pretty big. So, and from there, um, is a whole nother story. Um, what happened after that? But, um, he, <laughs> He um, delivered me from Egypt. He brought me out of the spiritual bondage that I had been in. And I went through some extreme, extreme warfare. It was absolutely crazy. I cannot even explain how crazy it was. God had been waking me up two, three times a night, every single night for like five months. And at first I didn't even know what it, what, why I was waking up. At first it was like 111, 222, 444, 333. And then after a while, um, when I figured out why he was waking me up, he started waking me up at different times of the night because um, he was saying that I needed to, I needed to pray and go through deliverance. So I started looking up deliverance prayers and I didn't know, I mean, man, it took me months to figure all this stuff out. Um, 
and uh, so I was waking up and praying, and, and he said he needed to switch up the times because the enemy was watching, um, trying to um, see my schedule, like trying, because they, the spirits try to um, watch your schedule to see when you're going to pray, so they know, you know, when to counteract and all this stuff. So you got to switch it up on them. You can't always do the same thing every single day or every single night. You got to, and you, there's uh, so many things, but um, he del he delivered me. He delivered me, and it took it took almost two months um, of straight warfare every single day, every single. I mean, it was horrid, and I I hadn't slept through a night in, in like five, six, seven, eight months. Um, it was crazy. It was crazy, but I am delivered. I am set free from bondage in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you can have that too. That's what he wants for everybody. Um, I did not uh, make any notes. And I did not even think about what I was going to talk about before the camera just turned on by itself. Because apparently it just turns on with a wave or if you move your arm or I don't know. Anyways, there is hope. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be in pain. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to be in that bondage anymore. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be on medication. God can heal you from the inside out. And that is what he will do. If you are expecting a blessing or a miracle from God, he is going to start on you from the inside out. He's going to heal you from the inside. He's going to heal your mind. He's going to heal your emotions. He's going to heal your heart. And he's going to work on you from the inside out. So when he does bring you to whatever you're asking for, that you're ready for it, you'll be able to steward it. And your heart will be in the right place so that you don't squander it, so you don't screw it up. He is a good, good father, a good, good God. And he would be negligent if he just gave you something big and you couldn't handle it and then it destroyed you. He doesn't want that for you. He wants you to be delivered for real for real delivered from the bondage from the slavery of Egypt it is a spiritual thing I love you all with the love of Christ God loves you so much and he wants to free the captives he's doing it right now there is a huge move of God happening right now and he really wants to set the captives free so be hopeful be encouraged I love you all there is hope for you. It does not matter what you've done. It does not matter what kind of sin you've, you've committed. God is merciful to all. He is merciful to all, all the same. All the same. He loves everyone. So take that and be encouraged by it and, and go to Jesus and, and get, get, get at his feet and just let, let, let it all out and surrender to him and let him take over. Because it only goes up from there. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you it's not easy. Being a Christian is harder than living in sin. Living in sin was easy street, okay? Being a Christian, I found out, it's more rewarding. And, it, man, it's, it's so much better. But it's not easy. It's not easy. It's something you got to dedicate yourself to. You got to show the Lord that you love him and that you want to serve him because you love him, because of your love for him. So just be encouraged. I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a good night.